Well, this is just a little bit of what's left after a semi tractor trailer barreled into nearly a dozen cars and trucks. This guy was coming out of a driveway here, lost control of his car, plunging into the water. You can see just how strong that current is. He's lucky that two bystanders came to his aid. First responders were here within seconds and it meant the difference between life and death. Friends of the victims were inside the courtroom for this video arraignment, very emotional. I asked investigators who actually killed Alexis. Court just wrapping up. It was a day of jury selection before moving on to the actual trial. They're also cleaning all of the school buses as well and will continue to in the coming days. The scene is still littered by debris here after that carjacker caused quite the damage while taking off. As you can see, the fire department still on scene. We're going to turn around here to show you where that house was standing. Yeah, let me walk you through how this happened. Apparently, the suspect walked down these steps here, close proximity to that play set that you see right there. What he didn't know was that adults were watching from nearby units. Officers uh, with weapons canvassing this entire neighborhood here right now. The amount of gas that's coming out is so strong that it could level a home. Since we broke this story online yesterday, so many of you have been going on to our social media accounts, leaving your opinions, asking questions. Jonathan, where are you? What can you tell us? We're just going to show these live pictures here right now. You can see another ambulance arriving. People stuck in elevators here at City Hall, as you can see behind me. A large presence of firefighters. And if we come back here live, I want to show you on the ground. We've got uh, all of the traffic lights here in downtown that are completely dark. The power is back on, things back to normal. But boy, what a day. The suffering taken out on stretchers, others making their own way to safety after being trapped in elevators and on dark floors, unable to walk the flights of stairs to solid ground. Just glad to be out of there? Glad to be out. Glad to go home. Firefighters arrived shortly after the blackout with tools in hand to pry open the elevators. This as those inside made their way out. All the lights just went out on it. It was blinkering and then it shut down. This woman says she was threatened with arrest for refusing to evacuate, unwilling to leave her elderly mother behind. No, I'm not leaving her. She later told us what was going through her mind. It's chaotic, it's dark in there. She's nervous, panicking, having problems breathing because she's scared of height. She doesn't know how she's going to get down these stairs. we got to get her out of there. Even the mayor was trapped at City Hall, his city-owned car smashing through the parking lot stop arm to get him out of the complex to run the city remotely. I had Ron Fleming, chief of security, uh, who uh, snapped off the uh, the wood bar. So uh, after that, everybody after that everybody got out of the parking lot. And it actually took firefighters a little while to get here to rescue those people trapped in the elevators because they couldn't get out of the firehouse because the firehouse doors wouldn't open because they didn't have any electricity. We're live in the city tonight. I'm Jonathan Carlson, Seven Action News. All right. The small city of Houston, 50 miles north of Atlanta, is without a city manager, and today it seemed without a mayor. Hello. Jonathan with CBS 46. Is the mayor around? Uh, no, she's not. Okay. Do you know where we can find her? Uh, no, she has not been in the office at all today. Teresa Kennerly is still technically the mayor, but no one at City Hall could reach her. At least that's what they said. We drove around town visiting her listed addresses and couldn't find her there either. The mayor is accused of privately telling fellow council members she pulled the resume of a black candidate for the city administrator position because she didn't feel the city was ready for a black man to lead it. One council member telling me privately today her alleged words and actions were not meant to be outwardly racist, but nonetheless, if true, she may have put the city at risk of violating civil rights laws, which protect minorities from job discrimination based on race. As word spread, so did protesters, some locals calling for her ouster. Utter shock! I don't live in a world that's supposed to be thinking like this. This is 2019 now. Within just the last 30 minutes, we caught the mayor arriving for tonight's city council meeting and approached her for comment. I can tell you that I love this town, I love the people, and I am not prejudiced. And back here live, we were the only local television station inside that meeting for that tense confrontation. More from the mayor and what went on inside at 9 and 11 o'clock. As the sun set under a crescent moon, my night was just beginning. So how long have you been out here? The bulldog joining a homeless camp under the interstate. And this is where you sleep right here? Yeah, this, is my, this is my particular area. This is all yours? This man didn't want to give his name, but gave his word of protection. Everybody around here nice? Everybody going to be nice to us? Or do you have to worry about anybody? Or no? You ain't got to worry about nothing. A few hundred yards away, I found a seat next to Cece and his neighbors. Everybody here have a different story? Uh, definitely. His life is here in two suitcases. We end up here for different reasons. Like I said, some because of drugs, some because of mental issues, 
and some because financially they couldn't support themselves in a regular life. They shut out and this is the only place for them. I've lived in a lot of different places. This man has been shut out, but hopes it's not forever. Some people don't want to change. You have to want to get out. The Gateway Center serves as the front door to the entire continuum of care. This is a place for someone to start their journey to end homelessness. Jack Harden founded the Gateway Center, the city's hub of homeless services. He says sometimes nine to 15 touch points, as they call them, are needed to get someone in the door. An outreach worker going up, introducing themselves to the person, engaging in a conversation recognizing their humanity. He admits there's a more visible homeless population downtown, despite an overall reduction in the past decade. Partnering with Gateway is Mercy Care. CEO Tom Andrews take on what we're seeing on the streets. The lack of emergency shelters. He oversees a team we shadowed one recent midday. How are you doing today? Taking vitals and handing out hygiene kits. On our night out, as Atlanta hums from the Jackson Street Bridge, just blocks away a side of the city not so pretty. And back under the overpass, the night dragged on. We continued talking about life down here. I see things, I see bad behavior, I see people doing things to other people. While we talked, I always kept watch. Who are these guys down there? I don't know, know I don't know them. I know this man here, yeah. that man there. And the rats that kept us company. Bugs, rat festation, uh, uh, raccoons. Sounds hard. I mean, it's a hard knock life, you know. We find out you can't make an excuse, you just gotta make a way. And with that, it was time to let Cece and his friends try their best to rest. The traffic put you to sleep at night? Of course, that's, that's like a lullaby to some of us. It put us to sleep.